project. Um, today is our live Facebook feed and I'm here to answer questions for you and share my knowledge a little bit about um, amputees. So I've been a therapist here for going on 10 years. I've worked with amputees for most of my career, probably about um, 17 years of that time. Um, I really enjoy it. Most of the amputees we see here are usually below the knee or above the knee. We do get some hip disarticulation. So if you're watching this and wondering, you know, what, who, who's appropriate to come here, who do we treat? We basically treat it all. However, our most common are our below knees and above the knee amputees. And what happens is a person will come to me on their, their initial eval. Um, I'll assess something called the AMPRO, which is a specialized objective test to get a good information about um, what their functional level is. And based on your functional level, that will um, your insurance will approve uh, certain components of your ankle or the knee joint. Um, and the higher function you are, the better components you can get. So part of our um, job is assessing that and making sure that in our therapies that we can help advance your um, K level. So there's K level one through K level four. Um, when you come in, I will do these tests and then I will um, have you do a six minute walk test and we'll see how fast you can walk. And um, the other thing we wanna do is we wanna look at your gait mechanics. That's a big um, component of getting a new prosthesis. You know, how well are you walking? Um, what happens with most people with a new prosthesis is that they don't want to put any pressure on that side. So something that we want to do in therapy is called forced use, so it's a fancy name of making you stand on that prosthetic leg. Um, and that's pretty much the whole basis of our, um, our treatment, using that leg, gaining strength, and then working on balance, and then seeing what kind of assistive device you might need would it be uh, a walker? Do you need a wheelchair? Do you need a standard cane? Are we going to use something like loft strand crutches? So we can bring out different um, assistive devices for you that maybe you really haven't heard of and that might help you give you better balance and safety, um, but allow you to walk better. Um, usually when someone comes to me, they are just getting their prosthesis. They don't know how to wear it. They don't know how to put it on. It might take them, you know, 10 minutes up to 45 minutes to put your leg on. That's normal. My job is to help you uh, figure out a way to improve that and just practice. So we're usually starting with basics. You're putting on your sock ply, putting on your liner, putting on your prosthetic component. Um, and as soon as we get those things down, then we, we can move on to the harder things. Standing, weight shift, balance. I stop when it pauses. Okay. And then when it comes back, just let everybody know that, um, you know, to share the video. Just let them know that we're having some technical difficulties with Instagram. So it looks like we're having some technical difficulties right now with Instagram. Uh, please go ahead and share this video. Um, share it with all your friends. We'd love to have you here as a patient at the Recovery Project. We also have a question on Facebook. Um, do you need therapy after your limb is comfortable? You need therapy if you have a goal that you want to try to achieve. So maybe um, you have the leg on, it feels good, and now you're having trouble walking, you're having trouble with balance, you have weakness. Um, we can assess you too to see you know, what are your test scores? Maybe your test scores are low, and we can go ahead then and say, let's do some therapy. Um, so yeah, absolutely, we can do therapy if your limb feels good. Um, because usually there's something that you're trying to achieve. Maybe it's you can't get up, down and off the floor. Maybe you wanna get in and out of a car. Um, maybe it's something even more advanced, like you wanna be able to get back to jogging, or you wanna play tennis, or um, you wanna just go back to work. All of those things um, can help, therapy can help you, because we're always gonna be working on strengthening balance and coordination, and just trying to progress you to the level you were before you had your amputation. Uh, if anyone's joining us, please share this video. Um, we'd really love to have you watch and uh, send this info to your friends. Um, we do have another question. We have a couple of different questions. Um, how easy is it to manage stairs with a prosthetic leg? 
So it depends on what type of amputation you have. If you're a below the knee amputation, very easy to go up and down stairs. As long as you can accept the pressure in that limb, you're not having pain. You can, maybe if you have handrails, it's gonna be even easier to hold on and give you better balance. Um, if you're an above the knee amputee, then that can be a little bit more difficult. Um, you're most likely leg at a time. And you're always gonna bring your strongest leg up first, and you're gonna lock out that amputated side, and then you're gonna go up. With, the, with that leg next. So sound leg first, amputated leg second. And then when you're coming down the stairs, um, you're gonna go down with your amputated side first, lock out that knee so it doesn't buckle on you, and then bring the sound leg down next. Um, if you don't have um, handrails, and that's something that we'd wanna work on in therapy, you need a lot of balance and stability to do it without handrails. Um, if you can have those installed, that'll make your life better. Um, if you can at least have one handrail up and down, then you can use, you can turn your body to the side and then go up and down the handrail that way. Um, can you get a prosthesis from, for the arm if you lost your arm? Yes, you can get a prosthesis for your arm. Um, typically, that is more uncommon than the lower extremity um, prosthesis. And when you have that done, you're going to go to a prosthetic company that specializes in upper extremity amputees. Um, there's not many out there. It's a smaller number of people. So that's pretty individualized. Um, we do see people here with upper extremity limb amputations. Um, and we work closely with the prosthetist to make sure that the fit is working, you have no pain, and then we work on function. And depending on what kind of limb you have and what kind of hand that you have, that's going to dictate what kind of exercises we do. But everything is based on getting you back to where you were before you had your amputation. You need fine motor. You need dexterity. Um, do you need to take care of a baby? Do you need to cook again? Do you need to go back to work? All those things we take into um, our goals. Okay. Um, is there a different kind of foot that can be attached to a prosthesis? Many different kinds of feet. Um, that is all dependent on what the challenge is, what you're trying to achieve. So going back to K levels, the higher the K level you are, the more you're doing with it. Maybe you're jumping, maybe you um, have a job that requires you to carry heavy packages, heavy machinery, heavy, something heavy, then you're going to be more eligible to have a different component in the ankle or the foot that'll allow you to accept those forces for when you jump on it or if you're gonna jog or run. Um, but back to the K level, if you have a lower K level, then you're most likely going to be eligible for a lesser of a foot or ankle. Um, and that's something that the prosthetist knows very well. They have certain codes that the insurance will pay for. But if come into us and we can do the training and the therapy, and we can work on um, testing you, getting those objective test and measures, we can work on getting that K level higher through therapy. Now, what can be done with phantom pain? Phantom pain. Um, that's always a, a tough one. There are a couple of things that we can work on here. Um, some of the research says that um, using mirror therapy, mirror box therapy, you might Google that and the, uh, that comes up in, the, in your search. And that is something where we use a mirror that projects your sound side in the mirror and it makes it look like you have a limb on the side that's missing. So that is something that's telling your brain, hey, this arm exists. Um, and usually people find that phantom limb pain is because of like a disruption because of the nerve is cut, the brain's still trying to uh, sense that the leg is and the limb is still there. It thinks the leg is still there and it's not. And sometimes when it's with the lower extremity, we just tell people go ahead and practice, you know, bending that ankle. In your mind, think I'm bending my ankle. And those muscles that are still attached after the amputation will still move um, and still, you can still strengthen those areas of attachment, especially in a below the knee. And above the knee, same thing. Maybe you want to straighten your knee, bend your knee. Those quads and hamstring muscles will still move and contract and you need that for strengthening. Um, something else that's out there is called graded motor imagery. imagery. That's something that, that's a course I'm going to be taking later um, this year. I'm always trying to advance myself. What's the latest techniques? What's out there? How can we advance? How do we improve? How do I keep learning? Um, and I get a lot of um, education through the prosthetic companies that we work with. They provide a lot of info. I've worked a lot with Bob um, Gailey, who's 
pretty much the guru of PT for amputees. We take a lot of his courses. So, um, and there's also something we could do. We could use TENS, um, and TENS is transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, and you may be familiar with that for low back pain. Someone might put TENS on their low back. Oh, it hurts. I'm going to um, wear this machine. It provides like this um, noxious kind of stim, and it kind of confuses your brain, and you feel like this stimulation instead of the pain, or it can produce something where maybe it feels uncomfortable. So then your body is releasing its own endorphins and enkephalins, um, natural painkillers to help get rid of that feeling. And that's something that we could do. That's something that a therapist could show you. You can come into clinic and we can teach you how to use a TENS machine. Um, but, but that's what it is for, it's for pain. Um, and that's something you would use not inside your limb. Um, you'd put that on, you take your leg off, you put the stim on, the area, the pads, electric stim pads on the area that's bothering you, and then um, we would show you how to turn it up or turn it down, provide a program for you. Okay. Um, do you think above the knee or below knee is harder to rehab, or does it make a difference? Yes, it does make a difference. It's, it's harder to learn how to use a prosthesis when you're an above knee. However, that shouldn't be a deterrent because if your goal is to walk and you want to improve, then you're going to do whatever it takes to get there. Um, being a below the knee is much easier. You have a knee joint. Um, you're just missing your ankle. The, the process of getting through a below knee amputation is typically quicker. Um, running is easier. But when you lose your knee, that's the hard part. You aren't able to sense that um, your knee is locking or unlocking. So you have to retrain yourself to make sure that you lock out the knee um, so that it doesn't buckle on you. After, if you flex it past a certain degree, of like 30 degrees, your knee will just buckle and you can fall. But I tell all my above knee amputees, that's okay. Falling is like a badge of honor. You gotta, just got to do it. It's got to happen once, and then you realize I'm okay. I can get back up again, feel everything. Nothing's broken. I just kind of bump myself, hurt my pride a little bit, and then you get back up and going. But that's a part of life as a, an above knee amputee. You will fall. It's okay. Um, they do make prostheses that are computer um, motor. They have a computer in them. They um, are set up with a program through your prosthetist will um, do program the, the computer to make sure that the microprocessor component of the knee will not allow your knee to bend and have you fall. So it's got like a motor in it, and it um, will catch, and you'll you're less likely to fall. So those are very fancy. Um, uh, knee componentry, but it is possible to um, be approved for those and you go through your process with your prosthetist and your therapist helping you to get something like that. A Rio knee or Autobot knee, that's a microprocessor. Okay. Um, are you ever too old for an artificial leg? I would say no. Ageism, we should not not do therapy based on ageism. We should not provide componentry based on ageism. Um, you have to have a will and a want. You could have the youngest person say, I don't want to do this, and they're not going to do it. It's really based on your um, feeling. What do you want as a person? If you want it, we will help you and we will teach you. Um, it just really depends on is your leg healed? Do you have any open sores? Or is your leg contracted? It's very hard to walk in a prosthesis if you have a hip flexion contracture that won't allow your knee to straighten up or your leg to straighten. Um, but I do not believe in ageism. I think we do therapy for anybody that has a goal and that wants to work hard and that wants to get to um, a level that they want. Even if it is just putting a leg on to transfer, even if it is just putting your leg on to get in and out of a car or in and out of a wheelchair, or in and out of a chair, um, I think it serves a purpose. If you have a goal, then we work towards that. Is there um, is there an open wound? If there if there is an open wound, can you still use an artificial limb? No. Um, when you have open wounds, and this is very common because we see people with amputees, they have a vascular issue, um, maybe because of diabetes or um, some kind of you know smoking or a vascular problem. Um, so they're not going to heal as well. So they tend to have a wound. The more pressure you put on a wound, the less healing is going to occur. So when someone has a wound, we have to really make sure that um, they're not putting pressure on it, they're following the rules from the doctor um, and the therapist, and no wearing the limb until that wound heals. 
Um, and that can be a setback. However, in that time, you should be doing your strengthening. You should be doing your stretching because you don't want to, to lose that much ground. You want to be able to jump right back in when that wound heals. Um, I have seen people with wounds um, go ahead and wear their lamination event and the wound grows and we don't want that. Um, so you want to follow the rules. It is pretty strict, but it's important and it can heal, can get better, um, especially if you do have a vascular issue, it takes a lot longer time. So we have to just be patient. Um, but yes, no wearing it when you have a wound. Okay. And what is some of the equipment that is used to help um, with therapy for amputee? Yeah, so here at Recovery Project, we have a lot of different um, pieces of equipment that can be specialized to our amputees. Uh, we have your basic things. We have our elevating mats. We have parallel bars. Um, we have something called light gate. So with light gate, that is an overhead harness system where I can put the harness on you, hook you up overhead, and you cannot fall. Um, so it's called the fancy name and you can look this up online is partial body weight support treadmill training um, light gate just happens to be the brand of equipment that we use there are different things out there um, I happen to be partial to light gate as I am an expert light gate trainer so I really know the ins and outs of this piece of equipment and I find that the biggest problem with people advancing themselves maybe getting away from a walker um, you know, or not, or just getting up to a point to being to a walker is the fear of falling. We all have a fear of falling. Nobody wants to fall. Um, and if we're trying to advance ourselves with gait, not using a rolling walker, but I want to get to a cane, well, that's really scary going from all that support to not, to not a lot of support. So if I put somebody in the harness, I can then hook them up overhead, walk them on the treadmill. They can sit in the harness and not fall. Their little feet can be dragging you're good, you're not going anywhere. And I find that that works best for people, especially above knee amputees, um, to really get confidence, really get the ability to shift their weight onto that side, because that's the biggest thing about having an amputation. You do not shift your weight onto your prosthetic side, because you're afraid to put the weight on there, it doesn't feel right, I trust my good sound side, so I'm gonna do whatever it takes to stay on that sound side. My job as a therapist is to get you to force you to use that um, prosthetic side. So in the harness, we can do that, we can weight shift, I can make you lighter in it, I can unweight you, um, so it's easier. And then I can have you do harder things like turns, walking backwards, um, sidestepping, just even standing balance. We don't, it doesn't have to be related to walking. We can just work on standing balance and really get you used to using your prosthesis and putting weight on that side. Um, what is it that you find um, is the first, um, I do believe, the first bit of rehabilitation or the goal towards rehabilitation once a um, person has lost their limb? So the first thing we work on when, when a person comes to me in their eval is just, can you put on that leg and do you know how to manage your sock fly? Um, are you taking the leg and on, on and off to look at your skin? Because as we said before, you get a wound, you can't wear the leg. So we want to make sure that you're observing your skin, your, um, cause when someone has a new amputation and the skin is very sensitive and supple and it's not um, calloused, it's not used to having pressure, right? When we walk, we walk on our bottom of our feet, thick, you know, calloused. Um, and when someone has an amputation, that's like soft, supple skin that has never been walked on before. So we really want to go slow in the beginning. Um, we want to learn how to put our liner on properly. We want to put um, our sock ply on correctly because when you put that leg on, your leg is losing volume. Like So the size and the circumference of your leg is going to change constantly. And I say this for maybe six months to a year, your leg could change. So it is a long process. Um, and our job is here to like help you through it, let you know that we understand, we've seen this before, we know how to get you through this. And just to give you that... Um, that calmness or that information, confidence that we know how to help you and we know this where this is going to go for you. So we really want to work on sock ply, leg wearing, transferring, and then at home we want to make sure that you're not wearing it all day long. Like, oh wow, my leg feels great. I put on my sock ply. I'm going to wear it for eight hours. No, don't do that. Um, you're most likely going to get a sore because your leg just isn't ready to have that kind of weight bearing and that tolerance on it. It, ha it needs time to toughen up and um, 
and callous up and that skin needs a really toughen. Um, so usually that's what we're working on the very beginning. But some people could be, um, you know, just quick healers. Um, you could have an injury because of trauma. So maybe that um, leg isn't had a fracture or the skin is scarred. So there could be some things where we just have to manage and watch and make sure we don't overdo it in the very beginning. But once you're tolerating it, we, you take off your leg, you see your skin, redness, spots aren't lasting more than 20 minutes. We go ahead, put it back on, and we start working. So usually um, our therapy session is about an hour long. And we're maybe midway through, we're looking at the leg to make sure that the skin um, is tolerating the pressure. Okay. Um, well, there aren't any more questions here on Facebook. Okay. Is there anything else that you might want to add? Um, just that I think it's very important that you find a clinic that understands amputees. Um, you have a limited number of um, insurance benefit and uh, a limited number of money that you can use towards your insurance. So you want to go ahead and use that with somebody that knows um, and is experienced working with amputees. I think that's vital. Um, and don't think that you can't come back later in the future. I've got a lot of my guys coming back for a refresher. Um, and maybe you want to become a higher level athlete. If you're a younger person, you have an amputation. You can be a Paralympian. You can train yourself to do something that you wouldn't have been eligible before with both legs. Um, but it's just what is your goal? What is your drive? What are you looking for to um, succeed? And coming to therapy can help you achieve those goals. And hey guys, if you really like this video, please share. Um, I'd appreciate it. And I'd love to see you here in therapy. Um, if you have an amputation, um, we'll take care of you here at the Recovery Project. Share the video. Woohoo!